To the transparency, good morning. It is Monday morning, um, Eastern Standard Time, about 10 o'clock, just a couple minutes after. If you guys are watching from another location, if it's in the afternoon, good afternoon to you. Uh, let's get this started. Today's episode is going to be speaking about the placement of the sheath, where Kaylee's body um, was at, the positioning of it, um, so trigger warning as far as that goes, and then case law on moving the trial. So just joining us, good morning. Whoopsies. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Truth and Transparency. Good afternoon, welcome to the Transparency. Um, welcome to Truth and Transparency. Not sure if this is working. Today is not a day to celebrate. But the arrest of Richard M. Allen of Delphi. All right, let's do this. Let me present. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna be using Hector for a little bit of some of this. Oh, uh, let's see if this works. Also, check this out. This is how draining looking at surveillance is. Let's go with this time. just watching this all night long and then stopping it and making sure I get the make and model of these vehicles. But yeah. That's what I do when I'm not live right now. I'm watching hours and hours and hours of footage. This is what it looks like though. Just in case you guys wanted to see what they were talking about, what Ann Taylor is talking about, I wanted to pull this up for you guys to see what it would be like watching this. It's bank surveillance camera, 24-hour surveillance camera. So it's not, you know, but okay. Video. Mm-mm. Let's share this one though. Let's go with what's this? Media player. No, I don't want media player. I want my document. Okay. <clears throat> this is my little diagram for you guys. I'll blow it up. But if you guys can remember how um yo Maddie's room was. Carrie, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Janet, 
Yes. Four months. William in the house. Five months. Carrie, thank you. So I went ahead and I called this morning Ashley Furniture because <laughs> that's what I do. I make phone calls. I called Ashley Furniture and I wanted some, I wanted some, um, I said, okay, if I got a queen bed, um, what's the mattress size? Do you have anything that's like oversized? Like what are we working with? Um, because you guys have seen, hopefully if you haven't, I will play the clip. I thought I put it on my community page as well. You guys can go always check out the community page. Um, if you're a member, you do get perks with the community page. I always bombard my community page section of, with my members. When I get stuff, I usually dump it into um, uh, – yes, I can stop the feed, by the way, on the camera. Absolutely. Yes, I can. I can put it to where I want it to as well. Um. But when I get stuff, I usually dump it in there. So that's like the huge perk on my channel with the uh, the community page. Um, I'll be doing a members only live this week. Since I've been traveling out and about, it was hard to do that. But this week we'll do a members only live. Um, you don't have to catch it live. It'll stay in your feed. You just have to go to that section. You can pull it up and see what whatever video you want. Even if you are not a member from... When I did a live, when you still go to the members section, you'll be able to see something that I did back in the day. So anyways, going to this little diagram, this is Maddie's room, okay? Maddie's room. And the bed did take up a large portion of that room. Um, she had a closet that was on the side. This was a window. And then this is where her desk was, okay? And there was minimal room to, like, get around to the bed. I'm just reminding you guys. So this is my quick diagram of that, and this is the bed. Now, if this is just the bed, and now the question is, is what size uh, bed was this? Um, well, first of all, you want to take the size of the whole room. And I think what's his name did it. Um, Hughes has done it before. Uh, but I wanted to pay attention to if Kaylee's in the inside, okay? That's my stick figure. I can I could try to actually go bigger. So this is the bed. So Kaylee's on the inside. Let's say Maddie was on the outside, right? Now, um, she was trapped, so they're saying that the wall's here. Um, and the door to go in is here. So... And you'd be walking in. So also when your visual, like when pain would have been looking from the door, okay, when somebody is what like up against the wall, have you guys ever seen that type of like when you're looking in your kid's room and I'm standing, I think I might, I think I might just make a video doing it from like, and now I'm going to rearrange one of our spare bedrooms to do this. And you push up a bed all against the wall and you're not all the way in the room you won't be able to see this side, okay? If I'm standing just like right here, like I can't see that. My Even with my peripheral vision, it's going to be blocked. So um, it, it, it's interesting when pain wants to say that when viewing from, you know, the PCA, let's go back to this PCA, when viewing from the door, okay, where this sheath would have been, it was on the left side. Okay. But the way that Kaylee had been sitting up kind of in an upright position, but slumped over. All right. Um, probably like if you're going to be like leaning one way, um, it'd probably be towards the wall. Cause that's, what's going to kind of like let you like be slumped and laying again. This is just a trigger warning for anybody that doesn't want to you know, be hearing about this because it is hard to talk about. But the reason I want to talk about it is because, um, of where this sheath, if it was between, you know, next to you on the left side when viewing from the door would be the left side of Maddie. Um, now, there's been talks about, well, I thought they were kind of like on top of each other. Well, if Maddie is actually, in fact, laying like this and Keely was up against this sitting, but actually being slumped and they would be like then on her body, like slumped to the left. And then she's using Maddie's portion of her body to kind of 
um, have her up uh, in that, that slumped position. Um, well, after all the hours would have passed and, and the 911 call happens nine hours, these should have been in positions that they were never moved from the point of, let's say, 3 to 4 a.m., which after speaking with Scott Roeder on a numerous, and he's going to be on to talk about this as well. You're going to be able to tell because the way the blood is going to all settle. And you should be able to tell if that body or anybody's body was moved in messing with that, with when rigor is setting in. So, <clears throat> so that got me thinking. And what I will say is that if Kaylee is slumped over and using any way, shape, or form, Maddie's body to, you know, have her, you know, not all the way laying flat. Like, why wouldn't she be all the way sideways this way? You know, if I'm sitting in a chair and I can just lay down, like I can go sideways and go sideways this way, but I have the wall here, right? So the wall would prevent me from going any further, but I could still be like, kind of like slumped up, leaning up against the wall. All right. Um, so, <clears throat> Obviously, she was trapped, meaning the wall, okay? So, like, if he was to come in, walk around the bed, and start stabbing, let's just say, Maddie, Kaylee wakes up. She can't go this way. The only thing that she could do is try to, like, you know, pop up out of the bed. When you have the covers on you, okay, then um, when you would be popping up, or, you know, when you're trying to back away from something and creep back away from something, uh, that would be that type of a movement. But to try to get out, if you're laying down, to go out and crawl off the bed to go this way to, like, try to escape, that's your only way because you can't get out of the bed because there's the wall right there. Um, now, again, this is going off of what we've heard in different um, interviews, even – even with what the police are saying, when I want to talk about the sheath, where is the sheath? Now, um, if there's only one source, so check this out. If there's only one source for the DNA and it belonged to Brian, <clears throat> with, with what we're going to be talking about here and the size of this bed and the two girls in the bed, there's not that much room. It was up against the wall, okay, and somebody trying to escape, all right, which is why they were more – they weren't in the sleeping position. Also, let's let's face it. What if Kaylee, in fact, wasn't sleeping? I've, I, I do this all the time. If I'm – they said there's a headboard, so your headboard. You would be sitting up in like a sitting up position texting on your phone. Right. You know what I mean? If I'm sitting up against the wall and I'm texting. Okay. So something that I always thought was, I thought it was interesting that Kaylee was using her phone to make these phone calls slash text messages. And then all of a sudden she goes to then, or I shouldn't say she, but then all of a sudden Maddie's phone starts making, um, again, this is according to the reports that we have right now, that then Maddie's phone starts trying to contact Jack. Well, I thought that could be because of one of two reasons, which would be common sense. Number one, if my phone was to die and I'm like, shit, I could then leave my room that I'm in, go to Maddie's room. She has, if, 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 and in fact, they both have, let's say an iPhone, she has a charger in her, in her room. I go to plug my phone in to charge it. Right. And while I'm waiting for the charge, okay that I'm then, then I use her phone to try to get, you know, get contact with Jack or, Hey, see if he'll answer you. Cause he's not answering me type of thing. Okay. Um, now those are your two logical explanations is because it wasn't like Maddie and Kaylee were calling Jack from the beginning at the same time. Plus, I think that that's kind of weird. Why would Maddie be calling Jack off the rip, you know? 
She didn't have her phone with her that night out. If it was on her, she was not using it. Maddie was, you know, the grub truck. No phone ever came out of any pocket. We didn't we didn't see any phone. Uh, maybe Maddie left it. Maybe, you know, she just didn't get on it. But I can't see anywhere where it's a visible phone from a time that we have any surveillance on her, meaning at Corner Club, meaning at walking um, from the corner club to the grub truck if and in fact that is even that walking path which let's go ahead and say it is um and then obviously at the grub truck i don't see any phone by maddie okay kaylee was on it well when you're on your phone for a long time you, your phone can die so was it that kaylee's phone died and that she then went into um her room and she was in there while her phone was being charged. And then uh, Kaylee used Maddie's phone. Or, hey, I can't get a hold of Jack. Can you try and see if he'll answer your call, your text? Um, or she just, her phone was still working, but she decided, okay, let me see if he answers her. And I'm just going to use her phone, meaning her as in Maddie. Um, either way, it's at 226 to 252. And it's a get home at, you know, the they were saying 145. Olivia wanted them to change that to 156 a.m. Now we have this Linda Lane. Okay. So if I was sitting in a round room with people, I'd be like, okay, I don't believe obviously anybody was dead when it comes to Maddie and Kaylee. Um, obviously, they're going to be still alive until 156. Like there's going to be no questions asked. Can we say the same about Ethan and Zana? No, right now with the information that I have, I can't because um, I I don't care if you say, oh, Zana received a DoorDash. We don't know if Zana made that DoorDash. I could DoorDash you right now. I would make the DoorDash for you. It'd be coming to your home. You had no involvement in that. You didn't even know I did it, okay? So <clears throat> we know that Maddie and Kaylee are still alive. Without a doubt, 156. Ethan and Zana, we don't know. Right? We don't have anything that's concrete to that has been provided to us. What we do have is everybody was home by 2 and everybody was in their rooms by 4. Okay? And for someone to give that statement, it would have to be the last person that would have been in their rooms to give that statement. But this is how much... I'm putting 10% stock into this. This is, everyone can get fucked with that. But I will give you this. Everyone home by two? Um, sure. And why I'm going to say that is because of um, Ethan, or I'm sorry, Zana's dad. I am putting stock into what Zana's dad said. So Zana's dad said that she was home. They were watching a movie. So I'm going to go ahead and say that they're home. <clears throat> now, now we go back and we look at, we have Linda Lane. Do I think Linda Lane um, is, is real? Yes. I do think Linda Lane cameras are real. Uh, how, how, why do I believe this? Because I actually talked to the Kane guy. Um, whose son is a realtor and he tried to strike my video when I was able to go and grab the information of his other rental properties. And I had those all recorded on the insides of stuff to show there was a, um, it was a really creepy uh, one bedroom. And then the Linda Lane one, he wanted those to come off. He wanted all of those to come down. He was, that's why he went around. Cause I was like, how does this cane guy know how to strike videos? Well, his son was doing it for him. That's what I found out. And no, you can't just strike whatever the fuck you want. It's, um, that's not copyright, but what they did is, and I won it. I won the argument, but it took me like a couple months to win that argument. Um, cause there was like they had a video out there for um, on YouTube to sell, or I should say rent this property. That's where I got it from. Then um, 
I did a voiceover and, and talked about it. Well, here, Kane and his wife were in the video. They wanted that shit down. So they they went and tried to strike my video. I countered, won it. But what they had done is they then wiped all of their stuff. And I said, why are you wiping all of your stuff? Like it's, I mean, aren't you going to? Don't, aren't you going to need to rent these apartments out? I mean, you're sometime going to have to do this again where you're renting an apartment. Yeah, because that's what you do. So it's very, very suspicious. Like, it was very sus. I could just say it like that. Like, very sus that they would care about any of that. Um, but why I believe that they, they cared is because in the video, you can see the camera. You can see... Uh, this downstairs area to go wash your clothes. Like it was laundry, but the kind of anybody could kind of get into it because it really wasn't locked appropriately. Um, yeah, he does. The owner waves into the mirror. It's it just, I mean, it's a normal video that you would think, but this guy wanted it completely wiped from the internet. So whatever. Um, but once I saw that it was his son and his son had that much involve involvement in his operation and, and what he did, I looked into his son and then I found out that the bagel, bagel gate, um, when I talked to the guy that went down there to shove the camera in the bagel guy's face, <clears throat> when I talked to him, um, he said that Kane's son is involved with all of those people that do that online trolling shit. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I was able to connect some dots with who this Kane guy was, who his son was, Sage or whatever, and... Um, <clears throat> very, very interesting. And so when you want to talk about who could leak anything, well, I believe that your leak is, is coming straight from, um, the guy that I think runs, runs it all. It, it may be his dad's property, but I think his, I think his, his son, um, it had access to that. And if they didn't do when they pulled the, that video from Linda Lane, I'm very interested in how they got it. Did they just take, did they just say, we're going to come and we're going to take all your hardware? Okay. Because if I'm not mistaken, Kane went and was able to retrieve his property back. So I'm looking into that. That came out in an article. Um, again, I have so much crap on this case. Um, but anyways, Going back to, you know, Linda Lane. <clears throat> Do I think it's real? Yes. Something interesting that Ann said was talking about the audio with a, a video. Could it be the Linda Lane? Yes. But I, I'm curious if it's the audio of the thud and of the dog. Okay. Because when I was there, I would be making a huge push for I'm telling you, the stairs that are right next to the house, literally, you walk out of that house, you, you're you right there if you make a right into going up that little hill to get back to where you park. Right there, there are stairs, okay? And what it could look like <clears throat> on a phone, what it could look like is those stairs are close enough that you could that you could that one would think that somebody is just walking around that house and going up and down those stairs to, to include the stairs on the bottom level. And what I mean by that is I'm talking about your health data. Okay. Your health data. Those stairs are so close that you could argue. And this is what I think is really important for Anne when she's going through this is you can argue that those stairs are so close to that house that you could be on the bottom level of the house, right? Where Bethany and Dylan allegedly slept, but then we come to find out that no, Dylan really slept on the second floor. But if you just open up the door, you could probably take 25 steps. Let's even say, even if we say 40 steps, let's just fucking say 40 steps. You could take 40 steps and then you'd be walking up a set of, a, a, a set or a flight of stairs. And here somebody could say, well, no, I was just walking around downstairs. I walked to the bathroom. 
Then I walked into the laundry room. Then I walked back to my room. <clears throat> and then I decided to go, you know, upstairs. But I didn't go. You, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, you'd be able to somebody that's trying to say they didn't leave the house. They're going to say that those steps were all taken inside. But your argument could easily be that those 40 steps could get you to the um, could get you to the stairs that are outside to then go up. That would be a flight. <clears throat> Why any of this would matter is the movement in the house, not just after four, but I also want to know the movement in the house between now two and four. Because if I say that the killings were not at four or after four in that time frame, and I think they're earlier, I want to know what the movements are of everybody that has a cell phone. Um, and were these cell phones, you know, laying down, sitting down? Um, if you get home at 156, you're, you're Maddie and Kaylee. If Ethan and Zana were there, um, to ask them, Hey, did you guys let Murphy out? Is Mur your dog's going to like reach you and stuff like that. Then if you let the dog out, um, but if a phone call wasn't made and nothing happened between 156 and 226, my question is then, was Kaylee and Maddie, what kind of clothes were they wearing? Were they in clothes that were the, like pajama style? Like, were they basically, were they in the same outfit that we see on the grub truck? That's number one. No one's ever talked about what they were wearing. Um, but now I find it hard to believe that if Kaylee slumped over, whether it's to the right or to the left, and because she, she's sitting up, um, if it in fact this person wasn't expecting two people to be in that bed, um, with that struggle, did Kaylee happen to grab? the, you know, the sheath off of a belt buckle and rip it. The only problem I have with that is then wouldn't Kaylee's DNA be on that sheath? If there was this type of a struggle in this small of a bed, now we're talking about the sheath being between two people in a sense, right? Because if by the, by looking at it from the door, the sheath was on the left side, that is in the PCA. You're married to that. You understand that you're married to that. So if I'm looking from this and what I, what I think he just means by that is that where was it located? It doesn't mean that I could see it. Where was it located? Well, it was between the two bodies, but it was on the left side of Maddie. But why did he, why in the PCA did they, did they write it the way that they did? What I noticed with PCA is after reading them now to the point of, Okay, how how can I word this so that it's it's not considered a lie, more or less? Like how can I how can I word this? Um, so I can say that the sheath was just on the left side of Maddie's body, um, because it wasn't over here. <clears throat> now, with Kaylee. With them saying that it's on the left side of the body, we don't know if it could be all the way down here, if she's laying. Um, but with Kaylee being in a sitting up position and slumping one way or the other, right? Um, there's no way that this sheath in in a struggle doesn't touch any blood, doesn't touch. Any, you know, nothing else is transferred, just Brian's. It's a single source. And I replayed it on my community page what um, CC Moore said. <clears throat> and I think actually I want to bring it up. So let me go ahead and pull this.
when I ever say CC, CC my playmate, come out and play with me. That's what I think about. Anyways, um, let's see, community page, what do I got? Oh, yeah, here we go. Okay. Let me share this with you guys really quick. The DNA will get you every time. It's how the suspect in the mid-November stabbing deaths of four Idaho students was finally tracked down and arrested. That's what we learned when the affidavit of probable cause was unsealed in Idaho court this week. Investigators had found a leather knife sheath on the bed of one of the victims. They found a DNA sample on the button of the sheath. This and the cell phone records tracing his whereabouts capped the many weeks long investigation. That included narrowing down which white Hyundai Elantra had been captured on videos in the neighborhood of the house where the killings took place. A Washington State University officer then located a 2015 white Hyundai Elantra in an apartment complex parking lot. The owners. Okay. <clears throat> I want to say this. Just being there, going through that whole, that apartment complex is huge. It's windy. Um, it's a huge complex. Um, that's all. Driver's license information and photograph were consistent with a surviving roommate's description of the masked suspect's height and build and bushy eyebrows. Additionally, five days after the murders, the suspect had obtained a new license plate for his car. The car was located at the suspect's family residence in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. CNN has reported he was under surveillance and he was seen cleaning his car inside and out using surgical gloves and <laughs> depositing trash in the wee hours in a neighbor's garbage can. On December 27, Pennsylvania law enforcement discovered- You don't think before the gag order came out that any of this shit would surface? We saw the we saw him being pulled over. Remember that those videos weren't out yet. That car was in, in impeccable condition. It was clean as a whistle. The only thing that was dirty, obviously, you're driving across country. The whole outside is. But when you see the body cam of the officers that go up to Brian's car, his car with his dad, just like when the girl officer did it on campus, his car is immaculate. Okay. So, but this is back all the way, you know that trash and sent January it to the 7. Idaho State Lab for DNA testing. The very next day, the lab was able to match a DNA profile obtained from the trash as all but assured as being from the biological father to a person whose DNA was found on the knife sheet. Okay, and all my argument has been, I want to make sure this is clear. When you do the IgG process <clears throat> and you turn over a name that you believe is the, is the person, right? The way that they test that, the work they did, is they go and they get the sample of the name that you give them, okay? That's what the process is for an investigative um, gene genealogist. They don't say, go and get me the sam a sample of one of the family members, okay? So that's all um, in terms of... That's what the invest uh, an IgG person would tell the police that they're working with. Okay, here, this is who I believe that you know, or here's a couple names because the relatives, whatever. But here, Brian Koberger. Okay, go and, go and obtain his DNA, and then we're going to compare it to what we have. That's how they check their work. As the document states, at least 99.9998% of the male population would be expected to be excluded from the possibility of being the suspect's biological father. Joining me now is C.C. Moore, head of genetic genealogy services for Parabon Nanolabs law enforcement unit, which has made more than 200 successful identifications of violent criminals. She's not worked the Idaho case. 
She stars in the documentary series, The Genetic Detective, now streaming on ABC. And she is also has- Let me ask you something. Why wouldn't she have worked the Idaho case? Why wouldn't they go to one of the best that law enforcement works with to do stuff like this? Why wouldn't you go, why wouldn't they use her? So when this guy comes out and says, she was not working the Idaho 4 case. I think that that's just interesting. Why wouldn't you go and use, if you're using that lab and that person and they've done over 200, you know, successful, whatever they just threw out as a, as a, um, as a number, uh, why wouldn't this be the person that you used? It's worked on all 10 seasons of the PBS television documentary series, Finding Your Roots with Henry Louis Gates Jr. Cece, thank you for being here. What does this mean? Single source of male DNA, which I'm reading from the affidavit. It means there were no other DNA detected on that, meaning sometimes you can have a mixture. You can have multiple people's DNA. You want to have single source DNA, if at all possible, because that really just ties that one person to that item. Now, it was likely that this was touch DNA. Certainly it's possible. How does she know that? It was likely that it was touch DNA. Her words right there. It was likely that it was touch DNA. Why is she saying that? There was blood. They didn't tell us what type of. Listen to this part too. This was touch DNA. Certainly it's possible there was blood. They didn't tell us what type of DNA, but most likely it was touch DNA. And that would typically be just a few skin cells. This might've been a very small amount of DNA, but because of today's technological advances, we can detect even the tiniest bit of DNA. How reliable is touch DNA if it is skin cells in comparison to say blood? It's a great question. It is more transferable. So of course you would like to have blood. You would like to have semen or saliva and they might, you know, they haven't shown all their cards. We don't know all that they have, but touch DNA, now that we can use it because of the sensitivity of our equipment, it also means you have to be more cautious about using DNA as your only evidence. <laughs> right there. Um, you have to be cautious with using this as your only evidence. So it's a really positive thing that they clearly have other evidence. This is just one piece of it. Okay, right there. She doesn't know. She says that she doesn't know. How would she know anything about this case? Okay. I, how do you, how would you know anything about this case? And, and she doesn't. Okay. But what she's saying right there, you have to be very, very careful because of um, with, with DNA being your only source. Okay. But she says right here that there's all this other evidence. This is January 7th. I believe that this came out. Um, I can go back and check. It's uh, like I said, it's on my community page, but, um, hearing it from her to say, you have to be very, very careful. This is not your only source of evidence. Well, I'm saying it right here is what else do you have? If you take away the sheath and you take away the DNA, because what do you, what do you have? You have multiple people that would be in the same position as Ryan Colbert to say that their phones were peeing off, um, 12 times shit. There'd be people that have probably have like a hundred times that live over there. You have a ton of people that would be on the towers during that time. You have, I mean, none of you'd actually have the DNA of those, of those victims actually in other people's cars. You don't even have it in Ryan Colbert's car. So, and you don't have it in his apartment. You have, um, so when she says this to me, I was like, unless you're involved in this case, how would you know? Because actually when you ask people that are experts, they don't know like a lot about the case because they're not following it like all of us did from November 13th. So just something to think about. We have seen DNA, touch DNA transfer in other cases. Of course, it's fairly rare, but it is something that you have to be aware of and make sure that there are other aspects of the case also pointing at the same person. Cece, good news, I guess. It's hard to commit murder without leaving something behind. That's right. 
Yeah, I've been saying this for weeks. That type of violent, intimate crime, it is virtually impossible not to leave something behind, even if you are a criminology PhD student. So I am not at all surprised they were able to find something. Even if he tried hard not to leave something, you still would. And that is great news, because what it means is that anyone who perpetrates this type of crime in the future should be aware that they will be identified, they will be caught. There really is no reason that we should see serial killer, serial rapist moving forward. This guy you know, potentially could have become a Ted Bundy or even a Zodiac, not identified 50 years later. But because of the DNA technology, the advances that we're seeing, both in investigative genetic genealogy and the ability to use tiny amounts of DNA, we can identify someone, whether they are in the law enforcement database or not. CC, the, the And how do you do that, CC? Whether they're in the law enforcement database or not, how do you do that? How could you possibly do that? And that would be the next question you'd ask her. How can you possibly do that? So here it is, guys. Now, um, the defense says that it was placed, right? The question is, is the way that this would happen is, is that you have to pay $700 to have a law enforcement kit to then give into the third parties to then run through their databases, which would be a receipt paid for by the FBI, by somebody involved with this case because in labeling it a law enforcement kit, and that's how you would put it in. And that all the stuff that all the kits that are in these third parties that have opted out would then not be possible to be matched. But the most important thing is, is that when Judge Judge was looking through this uh, you know, for a month, the IgG and what should be turned over. Did was there the receipts of the FBI or I mean, whoever purchased the the kit to be entered? It's seven hundred bucks. There's a receipt. Who? Where is it? So, one is that going to be there? Cases that you have cracked for which you have become famous are the cases that necessitate you putting together with, in connection with a private lab, a very complicated family history, family tree, and tracing back cousins and generations. That doesn't seem to be what took place here. Well, I don't think we can reach that conclusion yet. Investigative genetic genealogy is simply a tip. It's a lead generator. It should never be used as evidence against a suspect. And so it is proper that it would have been left out of the affidavit, in my opinion, because it should not form the basis of an arrest warrant. And so even though they didn't put it in there, I don't think we can rule it out. We don't know whether it was what initially identified him as a person of interest, and then they looked more closely at that tip about the car, or it could have gone the other way, where they identified him through that tip about the car, and at the same time, they were working on the genetic genealogy and may have built his family tree to see if it was consistent with what they were seeing. I have done that in some cases. If there are persons of interest, you can very quickly rule them out or potentially not be able to exclude them. Do you hear that keyword? If there were persons of interest in the case, that's how you would be able to do that. Brian Kober wasn't a person of interest. He was, there was no connection, right? But that's what she's saying there. And it's really important to go back and listen to that. And it's a tip, right? And you shouldn't, I want to play that part right there again. Is it all just depends on how, and where they were at in the investigation through that tip about the car and right there. And this is what, this is what, um, Ann Taylor basically said at the conclusion of her oral argument with, you know, I've, I've been on the case for over a year. Uh, every time I read the PCA, um, and do more work on the case, the PCA, like it, it actually goes further. It's further away from where it originally was in my brain to the, how was this possible? How did you get to my So client? even though they didn't put it in there, I don't think we can rule it out. We don't know whether it was what initially identified him as a person of interest, and then they looked more closely at that tip about the car, 
Or it could have gone the other way, where they identified him through that tip about the car. And at the same time, they were working on the genetic genealogy and may have built his family tree to see if it was consistent with what they were saying. And guess where all of this is going to come? It's going to come in the dates of the reports. All the dates of the reports are going to tell you what came and when everything came. Um, so going back now, again, you guys can see the rest of that interview. Uh, it's it's clipped over there. Um, let me go back to... Um, okay, I want to give you guys an example. In the Dr. Moore, Dr. Drake murder case ISP had, they make a bold claim and they said that Dr. Drake had water bottles like that you would go and buy out of like a regular uh, bottle of water from the convenience store that they had. He had those full of vodka. OK. And I went back and looked at the collection of evidence. Now, think about this. I said, how in the world? There was two bottles. One was Aquafina. The other one was, uh, what was the brand? Regardless, one of the bottles wasn't even twisted to the point that it was off to be like somebody had even taken a sip yet. It was, everything was full. The other one was partially halfway gone. Um, I said, wait a second. They didn't take the, in evidence, they only took 12 items from his office and those weren't one of them neither one of those water bottles were taken into evidence. Then I said to myself, how did they, they're, they twisted off these bottle caps, sniff them, drank them. How are you reporting that these water bottles are in fact vodka? And yet you didn't take those into evidence. Like when they process the scene, This is ISP. Now think about this. Now we're going to talk about the Idaho 4 case now and processing a scene. They only took 103 pieces of evidence. 103 in this house. 103 pieces. Um, did you guys notice when the mattresses were being um, thrown out of those trucks? I couldn't tell if any mattress had been cut out meaning destroyed in the fact that you're cutting um, evidence to take out to like test or whatever. Again, now I didn't get to see every single mattress. I believe that they, I only got to see like two, um, but 103 pieces. And then they, the day after Thanksgiving, 1125, because it was 1124 was Thanksgiving. There was no MPD log. On 11-13, it said 103 pieces of evidence. Then on, on November 26th, it went from being 103 to being 113. So 10 new pieces that they would have gathered. Um, or, or were the people that were updating the MPD logs just not updating them when they should have been? But they did say that they went in um, and they they went around and, and did something a second time and, and what have you. But they took 10 more pieces. Well, the way <clears> – how many people do you think were in that house at any given point in time in that past week leading up to the murders? How many pieces of DNA, different sources of DNA do you think would be in that house? You're going to have all your victims plus the people that lived there that weren't, you know, killed. That's six people, right? Then you had a huge ass party the night before. I mean, there's got to be hella DNA all over that house, right? And then we all know in college we don't clean. And when we do clean, it's a shitty job. Like we wish our parents were there. But for the most part, they did a TikTok that showed their house. And I pointed out in a different episode where they line up glasses on the stairs that are walking up to um, 
to come from the lowest level all the way up. They had like, there was like a wine glass over there. And then if you notice in the different videos when they were processing the scene, um, there were glasses over there as well. You got people playing beer pong, flip cup. All right. So then you had a whole kitchen worth of, worth of stuff. Um, and I just think to myself, 113 pieces, um, everybody's phone would be like, are they, are they counting that? Are they counting stuff that, um, you know, the four phones of the victims, the two phones of the people that were the survivors, are they not counted? So like literally you can go through and try to count, like count to get to 113 and what you think would be valuable. But just to give you an example of how Idaho State Police works, these dudes said that they had vodka in water bottles. And I said to myself, how in the world are they claiming that? Did they test these bottles? When, when did they test these bottles? Because these bottles were never taken from the office to and being transported for evidence. They only took 12 items from this man's office. And yet they're going to go ahead and say that those those um, bottles had vodka in them. What, were you fucking drinking out of them? How, how, oh, we did. We just opened up the. So you twisted the uh, the top off of. Maybe those weren't his. I'm just saying, who would ever contaminate a scene like that? So then, how are you even saying that they had vodka in it? So then I got to thinking about it, and it's because he had. He was a chiropractor, and he has, you know, he's basically legally drunk with a 0 0.08 uh, alcohol in his system. And they wanted to make it seem like he was drinking while he was working. Why do I believe that? Because if he would have left there after he saw his last patient, let's say that he actually went somewhere for a little bit, came back, or was brought back. But at the end of the day, I'm like, how do you not have these bottles that you think are filled with vodka in evidence that you tested them, how are you even saying that they are vodka? You opened them and drank them? So then I go to the Idaho 4 case and I just see how these fuckers operate. And I'm like, I, I get so frustrated because um, how can you trust the work? How can you trust their work? And I just don't think that you can. I know that I can't only because I've seen the work that they've done in the, in the Brian Drake murder. And how and how their brains work and who they think that they're going to go ahead and move the time of the crime and, um, and go based off of a wife and saying what she said, just cause she was on the phone with her husband. Allegedly that's like, that's like Dylan or Bethany saying, I know that I popped out of bed and heard that at, you know, after four o'clock, where are you getting that from her just statements? Okay. Well, that's not going to cut it. Okay. Bethany and Dylan's statements, if and in fact they were coming as intoxicated people, those aren't going to hold up and they shouldn't hold up to an investigator. You should have other things that corroborate what you are saying. If I'm investigating something, okay, well, do you have a, can we, can we take a look at your phone? Can we download it? Blah, blah, blah. So I want to go back to the positioning. Kaylee's sitting upright. Maddie's laying down. The phones are going, both of them, and then all of a sudden they stop at 2.52 and they're never used again for an outgoing command. Now, this is according to, to just Olivia with, the, with her just looking at the phone logs. She doesn't have a cell bright dump, which when you plug it in and you see all the stuff, right, that you have. Um, but to so an outgoing phone call, text message, 2.52. Done and over with. Now, couldn't you argue that the reason that Kaylee was sitting in a sitting up position is because when the perpetrator came in, that's in fact how she was and that um, she was attacked in that position because she was sitting up and, and, and doing stuff with her phone, meaning texting or calling. And Maddie is laying down, passed out because she was intoxicated heavily. 
which she has every right to be and good for Maddie because that's a college kid who's on the Dean's list and rocking it on her social life, her work and her schoolwork. Um, Mod squad spraying it like Oprah in here. Gifted. Whoever got some of those, you got mods. Good juju too. Thank you for the new memberships as well. And all of us having babies or close to it. And we just had a baby. AG. There you go. Watching. Watching TNT crush it. Nice. Nice. Uh, nice name you got going on there. Um, so something that I believe now more than ever is when Christy came out and, you know, she said the positioning that, you know, she was trapped. She was sitting up against the headboard and she was slumped over now slumped to the left, slumped to the right. Um, and do I think that, um, Kaylee could possibly be responsible for actually catching her killer if, in fact, Brian Kohlberger is the guy. Well, yeah, because I believe that if, in fact, that's the case, um, that the struggle that would have ensued in that room led to, obviously, I don't think Brian Kohlberger would leave the sheath, you know? So, yeah. Um, and do we have Kaylee, actually, when this is all said and done, to, th to think on why this case was in a position to ever be solved because she was able to somehow jar loose the, the sheath from a belt loop again. <clears throat> Going back though to, um, 252 and both phones never being utilized again, you could argue that Kaylee was on her phone texting and, um, and that when the perpetrator came in, she was in a sense, obviously trapped. Uh, Maddie's passed out and we go back to what Payne said because he interrupts Dylan because she's like, well, I, I woke to what I thought Kaylee playing with her dog. And then he says, or after looking at Zana's social media, it could have also been Zana. That's just pure conjecture. That is pure speculation. That is, no. What's Dylan's statement? Dylan, I think Dylan knows the voices, right? Was it? Zana, was it Maddie? Was it Kate? Whose voice did you hear? Um, now, I believe that between two bodies of a very, very gruesome scene, if the single source of DNA that they used from the button sheath was Brian's, please tell me that there's blood on that sheath. Please tell me that there's the victim's blood on that sheet that's some, somewhere when you're talking about two girls being so closely together, which if she was slumped over and a little bit on, on Maddie's body, then that could also say that like when people want to say, well, I thought that they were on top of each other, the way that the, um, the way that it first came out when, when people were talking about it, that they, one of the bodies was on top of the other bodies. Well, if she was slumped over and laying to the left, and Maddie's right there. She could, in fact, that could be like, yeah, she was on top of her. That could be that could be seen that way, but not physically like on top, like a pancake, like one on top of the other, but that she was, you know, on top of her, laying slumped over. Um, For this, if this sheath, in fact, has no blood on it at all, I think that's sus. If the only uh, source is on the button sheath, at the button part of the sheath and the inner clap of it, that's interesting to me. Um, I think CC Moore said it best. If that's the only evidence that you have, and this isn't how you're supposed to do it, 
like what's up. But your argument needs to be that if those two phones and those girls, basically not another word is heard from them at from 252 moving forward. All right. Especially what were the text messages like? Was it like, okay, well, I'm going to bed now and I'm super pissed that you didn't answer me. Like, um, then look at the phone. Was there, was she walking at all with it? You're going to have that digital. But if there is no movement from that phone, either one of those two girls, because I believe that Maddie's there's not going to be. But if Kaylee wasn't afterwards walking around with it um, there soon after the 252, wouldn't it be likely that the reason that those phones were never used again is because they were not able to be used because the person using them or persons were deceased. Doesn't that make sense? Isn't that just as plausible as you would say as, um, well, they didn't use them again because they were sleeping. Okay. Well then there should be no movement with either one of those phones being walking around so that they went to bed at 252. So right after I got done talking or texting at 252, I, I didn't get on my phone then and look at my social media to like gaze over my Facebook or my Instagram or look at my Visco or um, check my email. I just texted him and called again. He didn't answer. So then I just put my phone down. Now, um, If it wasn't for you, Lana, I would have nothing to do with this because it makes my head want to explode. Um, I also want to say this part without being like. Okay, going back to the time. I believe that you're going to be able to have a medical, the ME is going to be able to say that the crime happened between, you know, she's going to give you a window. She's not going to say, yeah, the crime happened at 408. You have four people. Also, if, um, and God forbid, I hope this is not the case. If one of them wasn't dead and they had like, they slowly bled out or like that it, The time of the crime and when somebody actually could perish could actually be a, a, a larger gap than somebody would think. Do I think that's the case in this case? No, but you do have four victims and they all weren't stabbed and killed at the same time, right? Unless you have multiple perpetrators and you take two to that room, two to that. I mean, but if you move the time of the crime and it fits within the window of what the pro the prosecutor's Emmy would be testifying to. I think that's going to be really, really huge for your case. Um, at two fifty two, right before that point. or during that point, there are two undercover cops right next to that house with their undercover vehicle. When I say right next to that house, I literally mean right where the Linda Lane footage, okay? If you go back and probably watch the Linda Lane footage, which maybe I'll do here in my spare time, or maybe I should just um, pull it up right now. But I'm very curious to see what is going on at 2.40, to 252. Let me see if I can pull up my spreadsheet.
Hold on one second. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll look at that some more. Um. Give me one second here. I'm going to. Yes, this is the time frame I want. Hold on. One second here. I want this other one.
Got it. Hell yeah, found it. Found it. All right, perfect. Here we go. All right, take a look. So up in the corner here, right there. See where they're pulling away from right there? You see off into the right from the, so um, I'm going to zoom in here. Off and over here to the right, that is, so it says 2.53 and 56 seconds. They're in the vehicle. Okay, again, pay attention over here off to the right. Window is it cracked? Now they're going down. Right there. That's the portion I wanted. Right. Right there. So right there, when you open up the door of a car, you're going to have the dinging. Um, and that's at 254 and seven seconds. Those kids are just standing there, by the way. Literally just standing there. Here we go. Slow mo. Stop it right. See the kid in the white shirt? He's just standing right there. Two fifty four and seven seconds. I have this tape. Um, I think it's interesting that this guy's body cam. Normally when your body cam starts, it's um, once you, uh, this guy's body cam is always seem, seeming to start from the vehicle, okay, which is interesting. Um, and I'm curious if that's right where it's like it was turned on. Um, because they do redact stuff. So it could have actually started, you know, before this. But where were those kids stumbling down? Where were those kids? Remember he said, I just watched you stumble across. Remember that? I had this on slow-mo for a second. Now they're walking. Hey guys, Mosca PD. Come over here, talk to me. Mosca PD. Hey, is that beer? Is that beer in your hand? Yeah, I'm 21. You got any idea on you? I don't. Okay. I'll take it back to my apartment if you need. Okay. Hey, is that beer? Okay. I want to 
do something really quick. I want to take a look at Google Maps for a second. Mm -hmm. Google Earth. Let's do that. That's it right there. That's where they were. Holy fuck. All right, now let's listen to what he says about them walking, okay? Let's listen to this again. I'm going to zoom in if I can. Okay. This is right where they pulled the car to, like, park it. All right, so here, hold on. Is that beer in your hand? Yeah, I'm 21. You got the idea? Can you? Uh, I don't. Okay. I'll take it back to my apartment if you need. Okay. You're sorry. <laughs> huh? No, they just took off. I told them to stop, but I'm not going to push it. Hey, Mom, wait. You got trade in you? I don't. Okay. I'm going to grab your info just because you got beer and you're walking around with it. No, it's, it's closed. But... Okay. <laughs> no, you're good. I live like right now. I'll take it back if you need. No, we're just doing alcohol enforcement and running around beer across the street. Oh, you're so that. You're good. Uh, what's your last name? He wasn't even going to enforce it. You guys heard that right there? He's like, I wasn't even going to press it. They like just ran off. I wasn't even going to press it. I just, he was done. He was, he was basically done with it is what he's saying. He was basically done with it. That's a very important part. He wanted to hurry up and get his body cam on, saw those kids, but wasn't going to do anything about it. Listen to this. But he had his body cam on before he ever got out of the vehicle. So you got, you got, you got trade in you? I don't. Okay. I'm going to grab your info just because you got beer and you're walking out with it. No, it's, it's closed. But okay. Sorry. No, you're good. I live like right now. I'll take it back. You need. No, we're just doing alcohol enforcement and running around with beer across the street. Sorry, so sorry about that. You're good. Uh, what's your last name? Nothing's illegal about that. The fuck are you talking about?
Capiti, come over here, talk to me. Moss Capiti. Hey, is that beer? What's up? Is that beer in your hand? Yeah, I'm 21. You got any idea on you? Uh, I don't. Okay. I'll take it back to my apartment if you need. Okay. <laughs> huh? No, they just took off. I told them to stop, but I'm not going to push it. Hey, Moss, no place. Yeah, you got, you got, you got your idea on you? I don't. Okay. I don't I'm going to grab your info just because you got beer and you're walking around with it. No, it's... it's This is Tino's with the fuck translation services. Why in the world are you, you're not going to push it. You just happen to turn around and look to like, see where your, you know, your fellow officer was. Then you see this kid. Is that beer in your hand? Like, okay. Um, so let's get this straight. You put on your body cam before you get out of a vehicle. At 2.54 and 56 seconds which is two minutes and 54 seconds after Kaylee ever, you know, texted again or called or Maddie for that purpose. Um, I would argue that they wanted to be on uh, camera. 254.56. You weren't going to push it. Push what? What the fuck is going on here? Closed. But okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I live like right there. I'll take it back if you need. No, we're just doing alcohol enforcement and running around with beer across the street. No worries. Sorry about that. You're good. Uh, what's your last name? We're just doing alcohol enforcement, but we see a sign, someone carrying a sign, and then we do something about that. Okay. Boss, go 77. Check one. What the? All right, no worries. You guys taking off on me? I didn't hear you, so yeah, I'm sorry we thought about you were that. You all three turned around, and I pointed my flashlight. You said, "Hey, come here." You guys all turned around and walked away. I thought it was just like a fake person. Yeah, like how many how many fake people are out here <laughs> that you've experienced? Trying to something, something trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> How's your night going? I'm oh, pretty good. That's good. Just trying to stay warm. Is that y'all's car right there? Undercover. <laughs> well, it's trying to save gas. They downgraded us from patrol cars. Gotcha. <laughs> they gave us hybrids to save on fuel. There you go. Smart move. Smart move. Yeah. All right. Once, once, yeah. Once dispatch lets me know that that actually exists, uh, I'll catch you this. All right. No worries. You guys over at which apartment did y'all come from? I don't know. Um, I was at a friend's house. I yeah. couldn't tell you the numbers. Yeah. Okay. Do you know the person hosting the party? Some guy named Matt, I think. Okay. Who the fuck is Matt? A guy named Matt. A guy named... <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a guy named Matt. Anyways. Um... Anybody know who Matt is out there? It does. The Matt, the the honking. Uh, we're out here. <laughs> uh, check. Make sure you're 21. No you're walking yeah, out I here in it. public. Moscow 77. Check one. What's that? Am I good? No worries. Sorry about that. You're good. Uh, what's your last name? Uh, date of birth. 2001. Like, I just pulled that one off. That's an awesome birthday. Yeah, lucky birthday. Uh, you got a driver's license? I don't have it. What? No, uh, in general. I have, don't have one, yeah. What state is it through? I don't. I don't. Mm. Okay, so I'm just going to check if everything's good. Um, no since they're not open, um, I'll let you hang on to them. Okay, so Will I get charged with anything? No, or? no. Okay. Then what are you fucking doing? That's just enough for me to stop. Check, make sure you're 21. No walking yeah, out here in public. What? Alrighty. Moss, go 77. Check one. What's that? Am I going to take off? Or... No, let me run this through okay. dispatch. Make sure you're actually 21 and give me a fake birthday or anything.
Yeah. Okay. Do you know the person hosting the party? Some guy named Matt, I think. Okay. Yeah. Stumbling down the driveway like that? That's more than a couple beers. Right there, something down the driveway. But it's more than a couple beers. Here tonight. Beers. Every single one of them is hiding their hands. Why don't you guys all have a drink tonight? A couple beers. Beers? Yeah. Hard liquor or anything like that? No. No. Come on, guys. Stumbling down the driveway like that, that's more than a couple beers. To be honest, I haven't drinking anything. Like so wait, how, how could they stumble down the driveway when your car is in the driveway? Okay, check. take a look again. We'll come back to 608, but look at the beginning. Look at where their car is. He's, doing, he's making a three-point turn right here. He's backing up, okay? Backing up because this is on the right side of the car here. So they're facing that way, and now he's backing up to go back, and then he turns back to go down that driveway. So this is Tina with what the fuck translation services. That's a three-point turn, right? No? What driveway? You're in the drive. You're, you're in the driveway. So how could they be walking down the driveway and stumbling when you're physically in the driveway? Hey, guys. Mosca PD, come over here, talk to me. Mosca PD. Hey, is that beer? Is that beer in your hand? Yeah. I'm 21. You got any idea on you? I don't. Let me pull something up really quick. Um, let's go with this one. I'll take it back to my apartment if you need. Okay. Sorry.
citation here. And you put the rest of your information on here, but that's all your information. Citation so is MIC. Uh -huh. And then down here is going to be the page. Hold on one second. At 252 in about 24 seconds. Let's see if we can hear the beep beep. Right. Right there. Holy ball sack. Ready? I went and did the time off of the body cam, and it's at 2.54 in about 24, 26 seconds. So this is Linda Lane, and oh, didn't go far back enough. I want to just go back a tad here. When he turns the body, I'm going to look at 251 for a second.
All right, let's pay attention now. It'd be 254 in like 24 seconds up in your left hand corner, 254. I can hear it, so I mean, if you have earbuds in, you can hear the beep. It goes beep beep, and that matches actually up perfectly with the body cam. Now let's take a look at right. They were driving in that area. What time is that? Right here. Whistling. Rosie's fucking whistling Dixie.
Okay, now check this out. I was just there and I want to compare it to, you guys see how that card, how it did it, how it pulled up like that? Now watch this. Um,
myself over here and we're going to test this noise out. You guys, this is so... Okay. All right, this person, um, when they come around this bend at 2.48 in whatever seconds, they pull up like basically right next to where this car is covered in snow. It's very steep. Here's a good look right there. That's not a spot. So um, where that uh, vehicle is, that's the last spot right next to that vehicle, you're not supposed to park there. It's so tight. that comes between those two cars. Okay. Does this truck then leave? Does this truck then leave? What time is it? So I can, I just, I, I'm having a hard time pulling up my spreadsheet. So Figured in chat if you know what time the that vehicle leaves. If it does, you definitely hear it. Yeah, I think we did say it left, but I was trying to. Yeah, a little in the video. Do you know what time? Anybody know what time stamp that's at? Yeah, and you definitely hear vehicles coming and going, and you can't.
Okay. Hold on one second then. I'm just, you know, that's, it arrives four minutes before Kaylee's never on her phone again. Okay. So then I want to take a look at this really quick. So you have uh, 2.48 a.m. and some change. Uh, we'll say just 30 seconds. And, and again, remember 2.52 is when. Kaylee's never heard from again on her phone. Okay, now let's go like this with, um, let me put this up, put this at a timestamp at four o'clock. That three-point turn is exactly what the police officers do when they go and pull over the people in Banfield. They, that's how they turn around. Very curious to see what time they clocked out that night. <clears throat> okay. Did you hear that beep noise? Okay, that can't be coming from the car that is driving. That's a beep as in to lock 
a car. Right there. What's that light flashing? Look over here to your left. Right here. Watch right here. Right there. What is that? That's a light. It's like a. It comes from like shining like from here to there. So watch that. Right there. It's a flashlight. It's a fucking flashlight. Time's up. Right there. Four oh nine twenty five.
you you feel like you're light like that if you're trying to get someone's attention. All right, now let's go like this. Let's go back when I was there. Let's take a look over there. When I was there. In order to be able to see that hit right there, it'd have to be like the last spot, right? Trying to show you guys how close, in fact, we truly were right there. Right there. <clears throat> you could see Bella down there. It's not far at all. Right there. You guys see how the, um, okay, let me show you guys something. You see how those cars are facing, how they're parked? So when you're going up this way, like that car did, you can't just, <clears throat> it's very difficult to get into those spots. You have to be coming from the other way. And so I went up over, I stood in this area here, and she went over by the house. I should go like this, actually. I can, I can hear her. Okay, so we were just testing to see if she could hear me, but that's where the the house. It's it's so close. It's so close. Look, it's so tiny though. Oh, it was so fucking cold, man. right there. Where do I go up the stairs? right there take a look at this these stairs to go right up in the middle of queen these apartments right here one two three four five six seven look at how you are seriously at the door step okay 
meow. Right here. This is where. Okay. Right. Hear that dog bark? That's the dog bark. Hear that dog bark? Look it. That's the house. It is tiny. You are on top of everybody. I took I took hardly any steps. I took ten steps up, and I those these steps right here would calculate on your um on your data as walking up a set of flare like a set of stairs. This is where a guy was standing. Literally. And then again, over there, there's a dog that's in this apartment building right here. There's a dog in there. You heard him bark. You heard the, you heard the dog bark. But she walked through here. Stand over there. You're gonna come in on my live, and I wanna. We're gonna test some noise out. I'm gonna mute myself over here, and we're gonna test this noise out. You guys, this is so steep. Like I'm gonna fall on my ass. It is so. It was so steep. It was, this is how steep it is. It doesn't even give it justice. Okay, this is steep as like ridiculous style. And the person that would let me put it to you this way: if you were to turn, if you were to if you know this area well enough, okay, you wouldn't need to pull right here and to turn around and to go back down. You know this area well enough if you're from this area and if you've okay. been stalking somebody that when you drive here, this person, when we see like the three, the person that came here decided, okay, I'm going to, let me just back up here and then go back down. If you're familiar with where you're going, you would just continue on and just like circle around, you know, um, unless you don't know that this goes back and goes around. I would think that somebody would, that would be casing the joint, like they say, would know that that's my opinion. Um, I don't feel like the car that did the pull up back and go back down. I don't feel like that's the same person. Um, that is making the that knew how to go all the way around that knew that if you go up and continue to go around you're going to come right back down um i think the person where you see that they pull and they do like that to turn around um they just wanted to get they just wanted to go back from where they came from um like a doordash Take a look at this now. Go back and we're back over here to 410 and 37 seconds. So we have the flashlight. And the only way that it could flash like that. So now that you guys got to see that, you know, that angle, let's just go back to that 409 and 25 seconds. So here it should be coming 409, 25 seconds. So still look right over here. Right there. Right there. Motherfucker. What the fuck? Again, you're going to see it flash like that. And that's. It could also be somebody unlocking their car when their light flashes. It'd have to be in that 
In order for us to see that, though, it has to be in one of those two last spots. Okay. So then this would be, if that's the case, somebody getting into a vehicle that would be right, right there. That flash is really important. Hold on one second, 409, so let's go back to 407. All right, here comes the car. See right there? See, as it's, okay, think about this. The car is driving. We just hear that beep noise, which is, that's signifying either you're locking your car. Um, somebody is making a movement with a device to unlock or lock their vehicle. That's what it sounds like to me while this car is moving. So it's, there's two different, this is not the same vehicle. Now, you hear that little screech? Now, I think that that's a little screech because if, in fact, somebody was walking out and you're driving your car and they just, they, they're they walking, you kind of like press on your brakes because there's a person. Um, also, pay attention to the building right here up against this as, it's, as they're coming around the back. Pay attention to the lights and the reflection of the lights and you can see how far the car goes. So let's see where we're at, 406 now. Beep at the 26 mark, 26 seconds. Right here. It, they do like a little screech with the tires, with the brakes. And that's consistent with somebody walking across back there and the car having to stop. So who was the person, this is kind of like a, um, an OJ Simpson type thing, find out who lives back there, find out who was attempting to go to their car that night. Because by all accounts, they're trying to say that they would have encountered Brian Colberger. Do you get what I'm saying? The person that would have been walking across you, I believe that car stopped, like had to put, press the brakes to, you know. Um, I'm telling you, it's it, it's all blind spots back there when you're trying to turn. You, I mean, you can't see anything. Um, and so if someone just kind of walked out, which, I mean, wouldn't you see the lights? It's very interesting. Um, but there could potentially be somebody that was walking around back there. Something made that car sl like slam on those brakes. Oh, there's a light again. Or was that the light? Oh, that was the light. Okay. 
again, this is either a flashlight or it's a, a car flashing their lights. And I showed you guys how those cars were parked. So it's, I, I don't think that that's a car. Wait a second. What the fuck? The angle isn't. Okay, I found another one. Okay. All right. Over here, there's going to be a light that flashes right here. <clears throat> underneath the S in one. So you're going to see this one at the 925 mark over here. Right there. And then look over here right now, over here. Right there. Light to the left. There you go. Now look over here. Right there. The fuck? Okay, do you guys see that? You think it's a lightning bug? <laughs> no, it looks like a light to me. I mean, it, I don't know why that'd be a bug. It's a... Looks like a flicker to me. So you see. <clears throat> You're going to see this one at 4.09 and 23 seconds. And then you're going to see one at 409 and 36 seconds over off and to the right. Right there. 409 and 35 seconds, actually.
And if there was no blood on the door, is what they were alleging is that he came in the side door because there was no sign of forced entry. Obviously, when you come in the house, um, there's not going to be blood on you. But in order to leave, and if you're using a knife to stab a bunch of people, you would think that your your hands with the gloves on would be bloody to, you know, so to move the slider back open, was there blood on it? And from all accounts, what I could just tell is that they were saying the reason they thought that he left the slider open is because there was no blood to re you know, to open it from the inside to walk out. If that is the fact, is that if those are facts and that slider was left open, there is just no fucking way that you would not hear after being there. There's no fucking way if those people were screaming, in which I, I would believe that Kaylee would have been screaming. There is just no way that I mean, you would hear that. It sounds like somebody's driving really quick at that right here. Right there, that's a car. That's a car. That's a car. fuck was
Okay, watch over here. You're going to see a light. Like it, it's really quick. It doesn't like shoot like at us. It like looks like it's going, like the light's shining like that way. Look up over here and to the right. <clears throat> it's like your eye doctor. Up and to the left. Down and to the left. Right there. What the fuck was that? There it is. You guys see it? Want to see it again? Again, all right here in the corner, you see a flashing light. In... Now look at the time, though. Okay. So did, in fact, this person leave out? Is there a car that's actually on Taylor? Right there. It's a fucking flashlight. It's some type of light. It's flashing. What's the timestamp? Let's see. 1418 in like 43 seconds. 418 and 43 seconds. <clears throat> Did you guys see that light again? See, I would do a, I would do a make and model test. I would put, uh, fuck me for that house. I don't. I'd put the same camera up in the same area, and run it for sound tests. You have to, that's how you would test that to see what it would pick up. I'd want to, someone screaming from inside the house. The car. Wait, there was a light right there. What the fuck? Look right here. Right there. Fucking right there. It's coming from right over here. Take a look. Right there. Right there. It just happened. Four, 
421 and right there and 48 seconds. 421 and 48 seconds. Bryant's was the long gone. Right there again. What the fuck is going on over here? Now look over here. Sheesh. Four twenty one. Four twenty one and forty eight seconds. You're going to see. Right there, 422 and seven seconds. Okay, like right here, 422 and seven seconds. Again, right here. Actually, look, look at right here. So I'll back that up for those of you guys that. Okay, so we've got 422. Let's see. 422 and seven seconds. Hold on. 421. Okay. So 421 and 48 seconds is the one that's over here. 421 and 48 seconds. So look right here. right there. And then now look over here and you're going to see it right here on this car. And it's 422 and seven seconds. And right now. All right, here we go with the movement. Let us rewind. Just a little more. Oh, I'm going to go back further. 421 and 48 seconds. Pay attention to the lights up underneath the SUN. Uh, those lights that are there. And when somebody would be like walking across that, they would, you know, impair the the camera, you know. So 
Wow, 422. That light flickers a couple more times over there. Does it at 11 seconds too? All right, so check it out, 422 and seven seconds, and it does it at 11, and it does it at 12, I think, right here, seven seconds, then right there, and then again. And I'll look up tight, like where it says like the S U N for Sunday. Look up over there. The door opens. That's not the car that came before. All righty. That's not the truck that came there. It's in a different parking spot. Oh, uh, okay. That's where I'm going to stop with this. Um, <laughs> again, I think it's pretty interesting. Um, they're definitely not bugs, but whatever. Thank you there, April. Appreciate you. Um, again, okay, thanks for everybody for hanging out. Um, I don't hear any tires screeching. I don't hear any, any dogs of dog barking. Again, if that slider was open, you don't hear any screaming. Everything is so close together. Um, like think about when a kid's outside playing um, or even if they were in their house playing and something happens to a kid and that's, you know, they go into that like horrified screaming cause they like fell, you know, cut themselves and they start, you know, crying and screaming. Your neighbors hear that. Um, mm. but again, I want to thank you guys for all being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the thing that doesn't make sense with, with what people want to say that Linda Lane is what Ann Taylor's talking about, I don't agree only because all of it's there. It's here. Everything's here. Now she's talking about something that would be incomplete. There's stuff missing. Like they're the time frames of this, they're not missing. Um, everything is from, I mean, if she wants to go back before, like, I don't know, midnight, but, um, 
I don't think it's that. I don't think it's this video. There's a very detailed, I was trying to pull up the spreadsheet. What up, K Miller, baby? You get a you get a membership, you get a membership. Everybody gets a membership. Um you're the bomb. I, I, I don't think it's this video. I just don't. I think it's gonna be the video. Um the very, very important video. And that would be everything that has to do with identifying the vehicle and um, the thud in the 417 and a car like his, you know, screeching off and firing away and going at a high rate of speed. Get fucking right. I mean, you can't, there's no way to get a high rate of speed back there. Um, there's just, it's just not, you just, it's, it's too, besides it being so tight, the next time where you have to make a turn is so close to like, there's no getting from zero to 60 in like three seconds because they're, you, you're turning. Um, yeah, you're. Anybody flying around there is going to like hit another car. Um, I think the most telling about this video is that <clears throat> all the noise that can be heard between the hours of like one and two and then two and three, and then you come to the time of the crime that you want to stamp it on. And it's like dead silent. And I think that for me, after being there, and if in fact that slider was open, I'm going to call absolute fucking bullshit if that slider door was open. Everything carries over there, okay? Everything carries. Um, and it's and it's not far away. It's just it's right. I, I you can see it in my video or how many steps you have to take to to be in certain spots. Um. That house is old. That house is paper thin. You guys saw how quick they were easily able to demolish that fucking house. Um, if all those people were home, especially like, hey, let, like, let's back it all up. We're, we're talking about like the, all the people that live over there, like Linda Lane, like those, um, the apartments. What about the people that live in the houses? on the other side. What about those people? They didn't fucking hear anything. Th there's absolutely no way that, that they didn't hear anything. And I'm showing you flashlights. I'm showing you, um, You want to talk about somebody revisiting a crime scene. Maybe they're revisiting the crime scene at this hour with their fucking flashlights. You know what I mean? Who, who I've shown you every body cam I can get my hands on the night of the murders. Who has flashlights? I don't see any of, I, I know who I see with flashlights. Indian Hill, where you're going to place that car down. What is that street known for? Well, that's how the cops go up and around. If they don't go out in the main street, they go, um, they pass the groves and then they continue on straight and they make a left to go and you're right up on Indian Hill. You'd be able to back up. There's just no way that you're just going to plot a car down and, and say that that's Brian Colberger's car. Um, also, being there, those houses sit up on that street with a couple of them that have like eye, like level views of the street. Um, they're all a bunch of newer homes over there, and they're all very nice. And they have, there's a bunch of surveillance over there, a bunch. But, and then I was over there on Ridge 
fuck out of here, man. Those houses, those are even worse than the Indian Hill road houses that they're definitely up higher. So I don't know how anybody's ring camera can see anything on the street when the street level's here and your house is up here and your ring camera's up there. Um, and people can say, oh, can you like have it so that's pointing downwards? Yeah, and it's gonna look at the um it's gonna look at your sidewalk. You know, that's right next to your door. Um, people don't go and get surveillance cameras so they can have views of the driveway. If you want all of that or the street, if you want all of that, then you're going to go get some actual camera cameras, but your ring cameras, that's not what they're designed for. They're designed to see who's coming up to your door. They're designed to see who's at your house. If you're not expecting somebody, they're not designed to get, um, especially how far back these houses sit that I believe are, are, are giving over surveillance. Um, if you guys want to watch me break down some surveillance, if you remember, I'm going to go into a members only live and show you guys, I'm looking for a pilot, a Honda pilot. And what I'm doing is I'm eliminating videos in our timestamps to prove that what this person said that they did, that they didn't do. And I'm not using ring cameras. I'm actually using 24 hour surveillance cameras that are running 24 hours and um, eliminating that they can't be seen leaving a place when they say that they are or, and also arriving when they say that they arrived. Um, and since it's a case that's already kind of been established, I'm going straight off of what they deem as the correct timestamps. So, but there's no way that you can watch Linda Lane and, and from Linda Lane have Brian Colbert. So uh, you'd have to have other footage that you're talking about when somebody's coming into the area. <laughs> and then where was he when between the hour between the time of 329 and 407 you know he we know what times he made is like twirls through and we didn't in the pca the only reason that we were able to pinpoint those times is because of linda lane and so i did that on a timeline um but where was he when he wasn't twirling through you know the King Road house up and around making himself known on a bunch of cameras. And when I say, when I even say that, like you're not even making yourself known, it's headlights. You cannot tell, you can't even tell what the car or the truck is that you can kind of see, you know, but just for anybody to look at Linda Lane and say that you're identifying that his vehicle from Linda Lane, you're a fucking idiot. And if anybody on a jury Oh, yep, yeah, that looks like a Honda or Elantra. Then they're a fucking idiot. Uh, and I hope to God we don't have idiots, okay? But when you actually see good evidence, then then you would hope that the jury can say, okay, yep, there is Brian Colbert right there, you know? Um, mm. But thank you guys for joining, and uh, thank you guys for the membership gifting, super chats. You guys rock. So, join me.
Look at you, William. Yeah, Ann Taylor made it pretty clear that the state is going to have to explain that. So I disagree with your hubby on that 100. Uh, at the end of the um, the hearing, Ann Taylor most definitely talks about that. So, all right, guys, see you soon.